One man who did understand the economic value of land was Henry George, whose life and work we are here to honour tonight. Henry George is best known for his advocacy of a single tax on the unimproved value of all privately held land. But one of the key messages from tonight is that Australia would have done well, possibly much better than we, would, than we have done, if we had heeded the lessons of Henry George and paid more attention to the economics of land. Because upstream from the great Australian nightmare of worsening housing affordability and all the downstream consequences it's creating for our society, sit our long-standing neglect of the economics of land. How economists came to ignore land. Economists' interest in land has waxed and waned over time. For the political economists of the 18th and 19th centuries, it was central to our understanding of the world. They believed that the distribution of rents from land ownership could explain the yawning gaps between the rich and poor, among many other uh, ills. The very first economists, the physiocrats, thought of almost nothing else. Land was fundamental. Agricultural labourers were the source of economic growth, while landlords simply commandeered their product and flowed it through to the rest of the economy. The next generation of classical economists broadened their focus to the complex interactions of land, capital and labour. Adam Smith argued that the division of labour and technological progress drove growth, but land was still central. David Ricardo argued that landlords are simply the lucky beneficiaries of land's natural scarcity and productive capacity, while Thomas Malthus famously, albeit erroneously, thought that land's inherent scarcity put an immovable constraint on economic progress. While Henry George, the often thought as the last classical economist and the thinker we are here to pay tribute to tonight, argued that the rents enjoyed by landlords must be socialised by, by taxing land values. Then in the 20th century, neoclassical economists changed tack. Robert Solow's landmark theory of economic growth posited that it was improvements in the efficiency of how capital and labour combined that drove living standards. Land was not a distinct feature of the model. The, land, the role of land in production and inequality disappeared from the theories economists devised to explain the world. Instead, land is treated just like any other form of capital and the windfall gains that naturally accrue to landowners in a growing economy, generally referred to as land rents, have been allowed to grow. The neglect of the economics of land in, economic, in, in recent decades have less left us poorly placed to deal with some of the challenges arising from rapidly increasing land values today, an issue I'll return to shortly. Now, in many ways, the shifting focus of land in the history of economic thought reflects the changing nature of the economies that economists were trying to explain. The physiocrats observed a world dominated by agriculture, here on the far left. where it would have been self-evident that the ownership and use of land determined what got produced, in what quantities, and who got it. Classical economists watching the world transition through the Industrial Revolution and neoclassical economists developed theories for a world that had transitioned. Economic power started to gravitate towards those who own capital and away from those who own land. For most of the 20th century, the neglect of land was of little consequence. For economies powered by manufacturing, who owned land, where it was and how it was used, was of secondary importance to the amount of capital invested and the pace of technological innovation. But as advanced economies of the world have transitioned again from manufacturing to services, land is back. Economies powered by intangible capital strive or stagnate based on the ability of individuals to come together and combine their knowledge and skills. It is, as any real estate agent would tell you, all about location, location, location.